26 years I've sat where you are and building a high-tech business, not only here in Connecticut, but throughout this country, understanding what works in certain states and building that community and what works here in Connecticut, one job at a time. I've also had the pleasure to work in government, to, and today in the, in the executive office of Lieutenant Governor. I've worked with many of you in trying to be successful and being successful here in the state of Connecticut on programs that this governor and this government is putting forth. So you know me. There's not much I really can tell you except in a Fidelity administration, you're going to see more of what you've seen of me in the last three and a half years, what you've seen of me as a businessman for 26 years in the high-tech field, in creating jobs, in understanding that if you win, we win. A Fidelity administration will not turn the back on business because business is the key to the state. A Fidelity administration will continue to work with towns and cities such as Stanford and partners in helping them be successful as they have been uh, over the years it's because it's important because the cities are important to, to government also. So we must understand that business, our cities, our communities, our education society are all very important to that key. In a Fidelity administration, that is something that will continue. The business expertise, the legislative expertise. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your interest today. Uh, I'm one of you. I am a business person, not a career politician. I uh, spent uh, the early part of my career at McKinsey. As I said, I spent three and a half years at City Corp Venture Capital, and then I went out on my own and built a company that employed over 6,000 people. I know what it takes to get this state turned around. I'm also an outsider to Hartford. I did not create this problem, uh, but I think I have the uh, solutions uh, to solve the problem. I've been traveling all around the state. Uh, I know what people care about is jobs in the economy, it's reducing the size and cost of state government, reducing the tax burden on working families, and changing the way business is done in Hartford. I have a plan forward for Connecticut. It's on my website, tomfoley2010.com. Uh, we have very serious issues in this state. We need a Republican governor. We have a Democrat-dominated uh, Democrat legislature that has created a lot of these problems. I disagree. <laughs> Totally with one, the, the legislature is the one who authorizes the budget. It's in the Constitution. It's not, it's not the governor. Uh, so we need better balance in our legislature, uh, and we need a Republican governor. I can be that governor <coughs> for your support. Thank you. Hans Scriebel. Thanks, Matt, to you and your colleagues for the forum. Three points I'd just like to make about my leadership uh, starting next January. Uh, first of all, this is about jobs. And as I said earlier, the governor of this state has to be the chief economic development officer to make sure the jobs that are here stay here and that we recruit others. It is about providing hope uh, and optimism for all the residents of this state that there is an opportunity to pursue their dreams through, their, through employment. Two things I mentioned that I would specifically do in that area to get people back to work is restore the $250 million that we took out of the special transportation fund when we reduced the gasoline tax 10 years ago to strengthen our infrastructure and put people back to work. And I mentioned earlier that I would invest in the Yukon Medical School to make sure that we have a, another magnet along with the Yale Medical School to attract additional research dollars here. On the cost side, in, or, in order to restore confidence, we have to believe we're going to get our spending under control. I mentioned consolidation, privatization, moving employees from defined benefits to defined contribution plans. The last thing I would say is, as a governor, I would stay engaged with all of you. No one person is going to get this state back to where we want it. And keeping people like you engaged on a regular basis is going to be critical. So you would see a lot of me down here to make sure you stay engaged in the process. Tom Marsh. Thanks for the opportunity. I'll start off by mentioning my website, marsh2010.com, has detailed <coughs> plans on all of these issues. Admittedly, I got here late today, but I didn't hear anybody say they were against jobs or they were against opportunity or they were against employment. So we're going to skip all the rhetoric. The legislature in this state has performed abysmally. And I haven't heard a single candidate on that side throw them under the bus, and they need to go there. The leadership in this state has performed abysmally. I will throw the Republican leadership of this state under the bus. It is an embarrassment that we're sitting here talking about Keno, liquor sales on Sunday, and um, part-time sick days, you know, part-time employee sick days, when we're facing a $4 billion deficit. The issue here is leadership. That's what the governor offers. As a small business owner and as a municipal leader, I can tell you I have been on the receiving end of the complete dysfunctionality of this state. There's not a mechanism in here that works. As your governor, I will bring that experience. It can't come from consultants or a, a, a team that's going to tell me what to think. It comes from my experiences, and my leadership will bring what is necessary to this state. We will bring accountability. We will bring efficiency. We will bring value. Those are common sense issues that can be done through a person's core beliefs. I possess those. I encourage you to, to visit my website, march2010.com, and get the details on how exactly I would do that. Thank you.
Kathy? Well, we're all about jobs. We all talk about it. But the plan I put forward is smart, effective government. That's what these gentlemen represent. That's what the Republican plan is. Uh, it's about growing our way out of the problem, not cutting our way out of the problem. We put some very solid ideas on the table. We talked about energy policy. We talked about how to team up with the university system and private sector to create that innovation, to get competitive opportunities to the consumer uh, markets. Uh, but more importantly, we talked about credit to small business. We have to continue talking about small business. They're the forgotten heroes of our economy. Um, I just don't see where the federal government and the state see eye to eye on that agenda. The SAFE Act of the Hartford needs to pass. It gets that credit out there. And finally, I think the 800-pound gorilla that we need to be paying attention to is the Tea Party movement. Those are the guys that are going to make a difference out there. Those are the gals that are going to make a difference out there. Because they're talking about initiatives that affect each and every one of us. It's talking about how people can petition their government, how they can be represented, and they can stop the encroachment of the federal government on the state powers provided under the Constitution. I know we don't have time to talk about that, but fundamentally when things go wrong, you've got to go back to the basics. And the Tea Party movement reminds us to get back to the basics. In fact, it sounds a lot like Republicans. We just got to get back to the basics. So I would ask that we understand ballot initiative through letourvoicesbeheard.org, letourvoicesbeheard.org. The ballot initiative and referendum is a mandate for us to get our state, uh, state back on place with the federal government. Thank you. And Larry, welcome. And, and, Thank you. And I, I'm glad you <laughs> give you a little extra and, time. And, and my apologies. Uh, you have undoubtedly heard about a horrendous accident. You, you were know. not the only one who was a little late. Yeah. Um, well, uh, what can I say in a minute? Uh, except to acquaint some of you with uh, uh, what my background. Uh, I'm a former state senator, U.S. congressman, Assistant Secretary at the Department of Health and Human Services in Washington, <clears throat> University President, uh, and currently the Chairman of an international organization based in Washington. I have a, uh, a broad view and a deep view and a world view uh, of the new economy. I understand it very well. Uh, and I am committed uh, to positioning the state of Connecticut uh, to compete in the new economy of the world. Uh, and I'm sure it's been discussed here uh, thus far. Uh, but please be assured that uh, someone who announces his candidacy, as I did last month at the Eli Whitney Museum in Hamden, uh, understands the role of innovation as the critical success factor in the economy. I have a lot I could say, if time permitted, uh, but uh, I won't even start because I will be, uh, I, I won't finish, except to say that I would be glad to discuss this further with any one of you or your organizations. Uh, and again, thank you, and I apologize for being late. Let's ask everyone to give a big round of applause to the wonderful. I also want to invite all the candidates to supply us with any additional papers, white papers on your positions. We'll post them. Obviously, we'll, we'll post this as well. It has been webcast, but we'll make it available to people who will like to embellish this.